Hey Anthem, today we're talking about photography and I'm super excited because this is something that I've been passionate about for a few years now. And today we'll be specifically talking about portrait photography. So if you want to take any cool photos of your friends this summer, hopefully these things will come in handy for you. You'll get to come behind the scenes on a photo shoot with me and I'll also be covering the basics of lighting, composition, posing, and also how to use your camera. But no worries if you don't have a fancy camera, you can totally use your phone and still create some really cool photos. And I also have a challenge for all of you to participate in at the end, so stay tuned for that. I'm super stoked, so let's get shooting. So first things first, let's cover some basics. So there are three key things that you'll need to keep in mind if you're shooting on a manual setting, and those are shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. So shutter speed refers to the amount of time that is passing as light enters the camera and hits your sensor. So it's displayed as a fraction on your camera. So if it's a larger fraction, that means that more time is passing and you're gonna get some long exposure shots, some blur, some motion and movement. So if that's what you're going for, you can totally play around with that. But if you want to kind of freeze a moment in time, get those really sharp, crisp images, you're gonna to want to use a fast shutter speed. So a good rule of thumb is 1 1 25th of a second or faster, but it really depends on the lighting and situation that you're in. Next up we have aperture, which is the circular opening inside your lens that light passes through. And this is what I think affects the look of your image the most. So aperture contributes to depth of field or how blurry the background of your image is. So that's what you see in a lot of professional photos where they have like the really pretty backgrounds. And for that, you'll want to have a low aperture number. So something like f2.8, f2, anything lower than that is going to be really pretty. And then if you want a lot more in focus, you're going to go for a higher number like f8, f10, f12 plus. And lastly, we have ISO, which is responsible for the sensitivity of your sensor. So essentially, as you increase your ISO levels, your images are gonna get brighter. So this can be helpful if you're shooting in a darker situation or if you're indoors. Um, but as you increase your ISO levels, this also contributes to more grain in the photo. So I generally like to keep my ISO as low as possible just to minimize that. So if I'm outdoors, I'll usually stay under 400, but as I move inside or if the sun is going down and I need a bit more light, then I will increase. When I'm choosing a location, I'll often look for a place that allows me to get even lighting across my subject's face because sometimes the sun can create really harsh shadows that just aren't the most flattering. So if you can find a place that is maybe in the shade or somewhere that's backlit, that's really helpful in just creating nice soft light on your subject. I personally love shooting in golden hour, which is just before sunset time, and it just gives this really nice golden glow to your photos, and it looks really dreamy and soft and magical, and I just love it. When it comes to composing your photos, don't feel limited to just putting your subject right in the middle of the frame. In fact, moving them just off to one side can actually be really visually appealing and create some more balanced image. In photography, we refer to this as the rule of thirds. So if you imagine two lines splitting your frame, both horizontally and vertically, you'll create these third sections. And if you place your subject on any of those lines, that is what creates the rule of thirds. And it's just a really nice way of composing your scene. This also applies if you're shooting like a landscape shot, you can put your horizon line on one of the horizontal third lines. And and that is a great way just to create a thoughtfully composed image. Another thing you can do is look for natural framing in your scene. So if there's anything that kind of creates a border or a frame around your subject, try putting them there. It just creates a really intentional looking photo as it frames them beautifully and just draws the eye right to the subject.
Another composition trick that I personally love to use is leading lines. Eyes follow lines really naturally, so if there's anything in your scene that kind of directs the eye to your subject, definitely use those to your advantage. The lines just really highlight the focal point of your image, which is always a good thing. Also keep an eye out for symmetry as this is a great way to create balance in your photos. Posing was always one of the things that I found to be really scary when I first started portrait photography. Something about taking charge of the scene and telling people what to do just felt really unnatural to me. But as I got more practice with it, I think it's actually one of the things that really helps the shoot go smoothly and just being confident in the direction that you're giving makes a big difference. Instead of having your subject just stand straight at the camera, try having them either turn to the side a bit or create some shapes with their arms and legs. This kind of breaks up the lines in the photo and just creates more interest and a cool looking pose. If things ever start to feel a little bit awkward or tense, try getting your subject to incorporate some movement into their poses. So if you give them an action to do while you snap away, this creates some really beautiful motion and you'll often get some great candidates in there too. Some prompts that I like to give include things like touching your hair, or tucking hair behind your ear, you can do a walk towards the camera, or another good one is just swinging your arms back and forth. This last tip is probably the most important one that I could give to anyone who's shooting portraits, and that is to be encouraging. It can be pretty scary to stand in front of a lens, but it's your job as a photographer to help your subject feel comfortable and confident while they're in front of your camera. But I think the best way that you can do this is by keeping the communication going while you're shooting. So let them know they're doing a great job, give them lots of compliments, tell them they look amazing, but also don't be afraid to speak up and get them to adjust anything that you feel isn't working. So those are just some tips and things that I have learned over my time of doing photography that I hope will help you if this is something that you're interested in as well. Photography is so fun and it's really changed the way that I see the world around me as I'm able to find beauty in places that I normally wouldn't have noticed. I think it's so cool how accessible photography has become in the last few years as technology has improved. Phone cameras are amazing, I'm sure most of you are holding one right now. So definitely use the tools that you have and just play around and see what you can create. You really don't need anything fancy fancy to take cool photos. It's all about creativity and how you take advantage of what you already have. So the challenge that I have for you guys today is to grab a friend, go find a cool spot, and just practice taking some portraits, and try to incorporate one of the tips that I mentioned in this video. It could be anything from rule of thirds, leading lines, getting creative with some posing, anything that inspired you, and then post it on Instagram. Make sure to tag Anthem Youth and also tag me because I want to see them, and we can't wait to see what you create. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something new today and I can't wait to see you guys in person. See you.